Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a review, hopefully shortish, of what happened in Serie A this weekend ahead of a double round with of midweek fixtures, which will tell us a whole lot. I'm wearing Nerazzurro, but not the Nerazzurri that are on the thumbnail. Inter had a heck of a week after all the trouble ever since they made it through in the Champions League. I think they're starting to hit form again. And it was, to be honest, ridiculous how they lost and dropped points uh, in the weeks before where they actually completely dominated games, created chances, just couldn't put, put them away. Now the results are coming and what that means is that we are having quite the top four race on our hands. Because uh, even the teams that are ahead now of the chasing pack, which is the two Milan clubs plus Roma, but even the teams Lazio and Juve ahead of them are kind of a little bit faltering, especially Juve. So this will be a tight race and Atalanta is definitely not out of it. We had a little bit of a pre-decider potentially in the uh, relegation battle, but um, still... There are two teams that are still fighting for the last spot, the last free, free, free spot. But Lecce seems to be a bit on the safe side at the moment. And then we almost had a new champion. However, Salernitana are the party poopers. And I always have to point this out. There is no Napoli jersey back there because they are literally the big losers of the weekend. And... Serie A did even everything, you know, I actually was kind of bemoaning the fact when I did my last V video because at that point the um, uh, Napoli game was still scheduled for Saturday that Napoli will have to wait and don't win it in their own stadium. So uh, Serie A kind of rescheduled and said, well, let's, we know that if Lazio drop points, then uh, Napoli need to win it. They can celebrate the title and exactly that happened. They rescheduled in Sarsa where the Napoli will play right after the Lazio game. And everything was made for it. And yes, over the city of Naples, they are ready. Scudetto Shields with number three for the third Scudetto in there. They are all ready. My favorite part is that the chief of the parks department says, please don't climb Mount Vesuvius and shoot fireworks there. The city is going nuts. And... While I thought that the celebrations in Buenos Aires after the World Cup win were wild, I think Naples might be able to match that one. If Napoli win that one, uh, watch that space. I actually really thought it was nicely scheduled. The game is at 3 o'clock. It was against a local rival. And that actually added a little bit spice to the whole, whole 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 thing. But you know, the celebrations would have not been they would have gone into that, but the main celebrations were already in the, in the beginning. And Salentana pooped the party. 1-1. One, one. Napoli still not the champions. But only Lazio can actually get them. And yeah, I think it's gonna happen this week. It is just a delay. Um, but I want to start not in Serie A, I actually want to start in the Coppa Italia, where it was all about the uh, meeting, it's almost a week ago now, between um, Inter and Juve, a Derby d'Italia semi-final. Personally, I do not like this uh, term, since I'm a fan of the third power in Italy, so Derby Dor d'Italia doesn't seem quite right, but okay. Uh, it is probably among those three teams. It's probably the the spiciest rivalry, not the biggest, but the spiciest. It's a game. I have to say that I felt that Inter will get that one. Uh, it was a little bit of a preview what Inter might actually pull out also in the Champions League because we know that Inzaghi is a cup manager. And I'm not looking forward to that semi-final, uh, despite everyone saying the karma is with Milan because they have won all the head-to-heads between Italians. Yes, they have won so many that at one point you will eventually lose it. And I think they will lose that one. Inter got the early goal through Di Marco, created chances, could have put the game, game away. They just let Juve hang in there, but Juve never really had the chance. It was a really mature performance. And I gotta say, Inter fully, deservedly went on to win this game. I'm not saying this easily, but Inter fully, deservedly uh, won this, this game. And I actually 
think that for the rest of the season, Inter are kind of getting back on track. The second semi-final was a little bit of a letdown, a nil-nil between Fiorentina and Cremonese after Fiorentina already won the first leg. So with Inter against Fiorentina in the final in Rome, sounds like a nice final. And as much as I would like Fiorentina to win it, I just think that Inter will keep the Cocarda. Um, they are the big favorites and I think unless there is another wobble, but I think Inter is kicking into the next gear. Uh, over to the Serie A weekend. It started actually with a huge win for Lecce over Udine at home. Uh, the goal came from Strefazza through, through a penalty, but that win gave now Lecce a four-point cushion uh, ahead of 18th. They're sitting now 16th. I think this is Starts to look good for Lecce. They might survive this season, which I think is a pretty, pretty big thing for them. Monza beat Spezia away from home. Spezia, though, unlike Lecce, they are in trouble. They might actually not survive this season. Um, I was literally, for me, as I said, we were visiting. I said, I want to be home at six. I want to watch Roma Milan. Boy, boy, boy. Those are two hours I will never get back. This was literally a game where everyone knew the winner wins the head-to-head -head thanks to Roma coming back. The two teams are level on points, level on goal difference. It's just uh, based on goal scored that Milan are ahead, ahead of Roma. If anyone wins this match, this is a huge plus in the fight for Champions League qual 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 qualification. But it was more a must not lose than a must win game and that's exactly how it panned out roma had of course many injuries what does Mourinho do he shut up shop he actually tried to control especially the left attacking side of milan with uh de hernandez and leao lured Mi uh, milan to always attack there left actually wide open spaces on the right side milan never got in there the first half was boring as can be with hardly any chance in the second half I thought Milan actually kicked, was a little bit close in terms of, you know, momentum going forward, but the Roma were always threatening on the counter deck. And just in the last few minutes, Milan seemingly went for the win, although you don't go for the win if you bring on the Belgian brigades with uh, Salamakers, Kalulu and Origi. Um, I wish that the Giroud free kick would have, gone, uh, would have gone over the wall because that wall would have gone in. Well, yeah, it was kind of going. I thought Milan is maybe pressing, maybe with a little bit luck, you score a goal, and then they run into a uh, admittedly beautifully played cow counter And Tammy Abraham makes it 1 0 for you, Roma in the 94th minute, and I was disgusted by the whole thing. Fair play to Mourinho there, I thought. However, this was not the end of the game. Leao plays to Salamakers. A Leao that had a rather rough game was a little bit frustrated and Salamakers put it in just three minutes after Roma won it. It was almost 10 minutes over. It ends in a 1-1. One, one. I actually thought after the 1-1 one, one that Milan actually might push on to win the head one. Did not happen. Uh, but it was not a good game. Just watch, just watch the um, stoppage time. Maybe the last 50 minutes there was a little bit there. Uh, big win for Atalanta at Torino. That actually, and to, coupled with the draw between Milan and Roma, allows Atalanta to also go within two points of these two teams. Zappa Costa gave, gave them leads, and Navri had equal, but Zapata very eight, uh, late, late on after again Zappa Costa assist. 2 1 for Atalanta, and Atalanta are an outside bet at the moment. Uh, then the early kickoff was, of course, between Inter and Lazio. And despite Lazio having a halftime lead, through a really nicely, uh, it, it was a smart uh, way that Felipe Anderson scored that goal, but a little bit against the run rough play because Inter were pressing, created the chance. And Michitarian actually had a goal wiped off for offside. And then Lazio take the lead in the third. It's totally against the run of play. Maybe they could have even doubled it. Um, the game kind of seemed to be going a little bit so-and-so until Lautaro Martinez in the 78th gets the equalizer and then Gosens with a really, really uh, acrobatic um, move, you know, hang, hang, hang in the air, gets the go-ahead goal in the 83rd. However, uh, he also injured himself uh, there. It looked, it, it, it didn't look at this. It's definitely a shoulder injury. It might have been. He might have dislocated his shoulder and then laid on Lautaro Martinez in the 90th. Gives it a 3-1 for Inter. And Inter fully back in business. Now they're level on point with Milan and Roma. 
and head to head and everything they're going on top of that table as well so they're now in fourth place inter is back inter is most definitely back after this week beating juve beating lazio and we always said that inter if it's not napoli they probably have the second best squad in italy not the second best team but the second best squad they have the depth uh and it's a squad that's a little bit on a downturn but they still have it in them and then as i said i watched the first few minutes because we had to go to uh the stadium here the first of uh, first few minutes of, of napoli against salentana i wanted to especially soak in the atmosphere it is something that you don't see often that a town that's so crazy full full stadium everyone expecting the big party the flags waving everything but you could also sense the weight on the sh shoulders of the Nap Na Napoli players. This was, everyone was expecting that they clinched the champ championship there. And Salentana did what they had to do. Kept the spaces tight. Napoli uh, too timid because, you know, you don't want to lose this game. You don't want to poop the party uh, or, or mess up the party this way. So was not great to watch. However, Napoli found the breakthrough through Oliveira in the 62nd. And you could see how much show weight was lifted. And everyone said, yeah, this is it now. We are going to win it. And Kvaratskelia misses a pretty big chance um, going wide. Maybe he should have put it over to Oziman. If it's 2-0, Napoli have a party. However, uh, Oziman loses the ball against uh, Bulidia. Who then runs into the box past him and just looks in the corner, puts it in the net, it's 1 1. Napoli do have uh, the, uh, a few chances uh, to equalize, nothing really big. But Salentana, and I guess Salentana fans, I don't know how big the rivalry between those two is, but since uh, Salerno is not too far away from Naples, I would imagine this is quite big. They, this is a big feather in their cap that they pooped the party. There and Napoli is a little bit sad. Verona get a 1-1 one -one at Cremonese. Um, not sure what to make of it. I think that Verona now have a, a decent shot of getting out of the relegation zone and surviving the league. However, you know, Cremonese is a team that now started to get points, but not too many overall. Sassolo win 2-1 over Empoli. Fiorentina steamroll Sampdoria. Sampdoria is gone. The goals come by Castrovilli, Dodo, Duncan. Kwame and Terzic, so showing that. And then in the late game, yes, yes, the Bologna against Juve. Uh, rather, I th from the bit I saw, I mean, my focus was more on the cup finals uh, yesterday. I actually thought that Bologna was very well in, especially late in, in, the, in the second half. They created uh, some chances after it was already 1-1. I mean, they took a lead through an Orsolini penalty. Clear foul uh, that the referee didn't give uh, at, uh, at first. Juve got also penalty. The Milik missed rather badly. He redeems himself to get the equalizer. But then it was kind of a very even game. We deserve it draw. And, you know, it's points again for Juve after a series of three losses in the league plus the one in the cup. But overall, uh, Juve are on a really, really, really rough run right now. And so if we look in the standings, um, we see that up top Inter are now ahead of Milan and Roma. Uh, for now, there's only one Europa League spot because Fiorentina could win the cup, which would send them into the Europa League. So have that in mind. Um, you see that Napoli, yes, they will become champions, probably coming this week. But it's more or less about this uh, battle for the top six. And I would say Lazio is not safe, Juve is not safe, Inter is not safe, Milan, Roma and Atalanta are chasing. It is a six-way race for three spots. That's carnage. That's rather, rather dicey, I gotta say. We have to see how the next weeks develop. And we also have a semi-final between the two Milan clubs who have distractions. We also have Roma have uh, the distraction in the Europa League. Also not going great. And same goes for Juve. Maybe this plays in favor of Lazio and potentially Atalanta. I uh, don't think that Fiorentina will make anything. They will put anything in the cup and in the conference league to secure a European spot for next season. On the bottom, we see that Lecce are kind of safe now, as are Empoli, Elas and Spezia on 27 points. Uh, Spezia are the team that is mo most likely going uh, down, um, but it's still a close call between those two. But Spezia, Cremonese, Sampdoria is what the model says. 
As for the top four, um, no more than five Champions League teams from Italy. I checked that one. Um, but that also means that uh, if we look at a table that we current, uh, like the expected final standings, um, let's say that uh, Roma win the Europa League and Inter win the, uh, the Champions League, then Milan in fourth place would miss out, for instance, and would go in the Europa League. That's how crazy it would be. So even top four finish doesn't quite guarantee it. You also have to check out the schedules and it's a little bit weird. Milan have quite a few winnable games. They have only a, a game against Lazio that we'll see where uh, Inter, for instance, have to uh, play Atalanta at home. They have to travel to Napoli. So this might be the heavy and that's why Inter at the moment I think is in sixth. However, I know from experience that exactly those winnable games for Milan are the hardest ones that they, uh, they do. Milan play way better against teams that don't sit deep. And I'm shuddering about the upcoming games, which we can see here the next two we have in the midweek. Uh, Napoli with a win at Udine clinched the title. Uh, I really hope for them that this is happening and they have the, the chance we get it exclusively tomorrow. Uh, then Atalanta have to play Spezia, Juve against Lecce. Those should be two wins. Uh, again, always should. Milan against Kremlin should also be a win, but I'm shuddering to think of that that game. Lazio plays Sassuolo, Mons against Roma. Uh, that's a tough one. And Verona is fighting for their lives against Inter. I still would think that Inter will win that one. But it's a rather, rather interesting Wednesday. Many, many parallel games that I hope there will be a conference. And then on the weekend, again, Rome against Milan. The last weekend it was the Milan teams thanks to Inter who won that duel. Milan now host Lazio and Roma host Inter. This will go a long way of deciding. And on top of that we have Atalanta against Juve. This round and this is the next time I will after after this round will decide a whole lot. We have also Napoli against Fior, Fior Fiorentina, probably with title celebrations potentially coming up. That was it from me from Serie A. Please drop a line to uh, below what you thought about uh, this past week. Who do you think will win the cup final? Who will make it top four? Or I should say, who will make it in the Champions League? Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.